there are also students who are not attending. And then immediately, immediately I after I found that some students who were attending this here are also walking down. So I, I happen to ask them, how do you find it? How do you find it? the first day human value workshop? And then immediately the person who were answering me were those who were not attending. And then the question was this. The, I mean, the answer to my question was this. They said, Sir, if we have to study human value and then it talks about. I think they will have, even we will have to stop eating. That is what they said. And immediately I, I told them, to the student, you think that this human value talks about being idle? Really? I don't know. Because they think that the study of human value and then to repeat it, even they might have a time when they have to stop eating. That is what they have. It is their conception. So immediately my question was this. Again, I'm repeating. You think that human value talks about living the idle life? Because this is the this is the reality. They they think that human value has to teach them. So when it comes to practicality, I think it is not about practicing human value study study human will over a period of time and then you leave it. What about the answer that I was, as I did work in the the thing that I discussed, uh, I think, I told them that it is all about living an ideal life than ideal life. That is what I was talking to. Thank you. Yeah, that's true, you know, wow. I mean, most of us have some preconception about what is human values and more, many traditions, right, we have somehow, you know, come to make a situation where we have created this isolation in your day-to-day -day life and this issue of, you know, living as a human being. So there are some set of people who are living separately you know, in this society. Okay. And they are, have nothing to do with this society, it appears. And there are general people who are living differently. So whenever you talk about these issues, we try to connect it to that memory. That if you talk about this, okay, you will have to do penance. You will have to give up everything, right? And you, have, you will have to become a monk, right? You will have to become a sadhu, sannyasi, right? So that's the you know, first kind of reconditioning that we already have. Because that's what we have been seeing around. That is why I first you know, gave you the basis to decide you know, whether it is practical or not. I am saying anything which needs, you know, helps me to reach my, you know, basic human objective, the human, you know, purpose is practical. Something which is not helping me to do this is not practical. This is okay, this approach to decide. If yes, then we can check, you know, everything that we are doing today on the basis of this. And we can also check what is being said here on the basis of this. <coughs> as to whether it will lead us, help us to achieve our goal of happiness, prosperity and its continuity. If yes, it is practical. If no, it is not practical. Even though lot of people are doing it. Right? Even though, you know, this is a common thing in our day-to-day -day life. So I took the example of this drug. Lot of people are taking drugs. Right? But is it, you know, able to help us to keep our body in good health? 
If no, then it is not practical for human beings. Similarly, this feeling of disrespect or lack of feeling of respect right? and demanding respect. This is what most of us are doing today. Right? You want respect from the child. Right? Do you have respect for the child? You demand respect from others. Do you have a respect, a feeling of respect for the other? If no, Working okay. Is it uh, audio at the back? Uh, yes. So, <coughs> if we are demanding for happiness, demanding for respect, without having the feeling of respect, then we are not able to achieve our goal of mutual fulfillment in our relationship with other people. Then it is practical. So this question you have to keep asking for everything that we are asking, you know, saying here as a proposal. Whether it will help us to lead to happiness, prosperity and its continuity or not. Similarly, you have to compare and find out whatever we are doing today in the society, right? For example, this, you know, we took accumulation of more and more physical facilities. And that's the whole target today, right? If you look at the education, look at the, you know, uh, whole society, the concept of development, So, when you are doing this accumulation of more and more of physical facility, is it leading to happiness? Is it leading to prosperity? Is it leading to continuity of the two? What do you think? Sharma ji. Shall I repeat the question? Yes, sir. You heard my question? <laughs> What is your response? What which is practical can be implemented. <laughs> yeah, but how do we decide what is practical? <laughs> if it is good for our health and our main goal, which is the continuous happiness, then it is practical? Yes. So then I ask the question in this context that today all that we are doing is accumulation of more and more physical facility. This is what we are doing in the name of education, in the name of development and everything. So, this accumulation of more and more physical facility, is it ensuring continuity of happiness and prosperity no. for us and for the other? No, no. No. So, is it practical then? No, it is not practical, only the bare necessities are practical. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I wouldn't even say bare necessity because that feeling of prosperity means I must be able to know how much physical facility is required and I must be able to ensure more than what is required. But when it comes to using it, I will make the right utilization, so use as much as required. And what I would do with the next rest, you know, of the physical facility is to share it for relationship and order, you know. So to ensure relationship and to ensure order in the society, I will invest the rest of the facility. But I will certainly have more than what is required. I will produce more than what is required. Use as much as is required. But the rest I would invest in relationship and ensuring the order in the society. Those details will work out. Later. But the question immediately I was asking that most of the people you know today are involved in accumulating more and more physical facilities and the whole society in fact is now geared to that. But having more and more physical facility, is it ensuring happiness and prosperity and its continuity for us and for all? No. 
In fact, what it is leading to is lot of, you know, uh, infights, the feeling of jealousy, which leads to fight, which finally leads to war. And you can imagine, we are investing 50% of the world resource for preparing for war. And do you think that war will lead to this? If we do it successfully, no war. <laughs> will it lead to this? <laughs> Just imagine, you know, America claims that it can it has enough weapon to destroy the world thirty times. And we think, you know, it is a developed country. I said, look, it can destroy 30 times. <laughs> when I look at it, to me it sounds very foolish. How can you destroy something 30 times? <laughs> can you destroy something 30 times? <laughs> Only once. So if you are trying to accumulate weapon to destroy the earth more than once, it is foolish. <laughs> is it or is it not? And we are impressed by this. <laughs> not only that, even to destroy the world once, Will it lead to this? No. <coughs> Therefore, is it practical? So even destroying once is not practical. Right? It is not worth doing. And thinking of destroying something thirty times is simply foolish. I mean, I mean there is no argument needed for it. And we are impressed by it. India, you know, America is a developed country. And we must follow him. That's what we are doing, right? <coughs> we are doing it in the name of development. So we'll have to start asking those questions as to what is it that we want to achieve as a human being. Right? What is the way by way of which we can achieve this? No, basic goal of human being. Right? And only those things which do ensure this is practical. Anything else we are doing is not practical. So now if you would look back, you would be able to see what are the things that you are doing. You will also be able to see whether it is going to reach, you know, help you to reach this goal or not. So all your preparation to fight you know, or war is not practical. You are doing it out of your you know, ignorance or out of your you know, kind of uh, uh, feeling of this jealousy, feeling of aversion. Right? And none of them are going to lead us to happiness and prosperity and the continuity of the two. But I will leave it for you to keep finding it out. So, this is what I wanted to say about this issue of being practical and not being practical. The second issue related to this is this of implementation. So, I certainly would say that it is not all that, that easy to implement. You have to really work hard First with yourself. And that is the major hurdle. <laughs> the system is not a very major hurdle. The major hurdle, as we now, you know, proceed and would see, the major hurdle is your accumulation of desire, thought and expectation which have come into you through preconditioning, through sensation. They are the major hurdles. 
So you have to be really, you know, working hard with this, with yourself. You have accumulated a whole lot of all this, right? Inside you, and you are not even aware of it. It is all being dumped into you. Right? You think I am perfectly all right. Everybody else is the problem. I am saying when you start working with yourself, you would realize you are the problem. <laughs> and therefore, you have to solve yourself first. So that is what is going to take you a lot of time. Because all that is there is so much of, you know, garbage accumulated and you have done so much of over evaluation about your own self without knowing yourself. <laughs> that is the interesting part. We have never looked into ourselves. We don't know what is going on there. We don't know whether it is worth that is going on there or it is not worth. But we think that we are all right. The problem is all due to other people. So certainly it takes time, you know, because you don't think that you have to work with yourself first. You start correcting others. You try to set them right. I remember, you know, there's one discussion which we have, you know, about this trust, you know, the feeling of trust in relationship. And there we'll discuss about the intention and the competence. <coughs> so one of the uh, professor in IIT Kanpur, you know, she came for the workshop. And she was quite, you know, happy about it. And this, her husband is also a professor in IIT Kanpur. So after the workshop, she rang her up, you know, and I asked him, see, I think it is, this workshop is very good okay, and you must attend the workshop. Okay. And there was some problem going on between the two. So, this professor came for the workshop very agitantly. And the third day when we are talking about this relationship, about the trust, you know, and the intention and competence, but immediately after the break, he was very excited. He rang up the you know, and he said, Now I have understood your problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the problem? You doubt my intention. <laughs> he is not looking at himself. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what will happen with most of us here sitting, you know. When you go through this, you will understand the problem of others. <laughs> That's what Sangi was telling, you know, that you can explain to this, you know, your children whether to waste food or not waste food. They will understand immediately. Okay. They will also start practicing it. Okay. Then you will find it problem. <laughs> because you end up wasting food. Right? It's a very common phenomenon, you know. When you try with the children, they pick up faster than you do. Right? And then you start finding the problem in the sense that they start mentioning you that you are doing something which is not correct. <laughs> so, it is certainly going to take time because the problem is you. You are the problem. What you have accumulated inside, okay, as something very precious is the problem. So, 
So that has to be worked on first. So you have to work with yourself. If you are not working with yourself, what will happen? <coughs> a lot of assumptions here already sitting in you. Then you will take this also another set of assumption. Right? You will put it there, it will become a mix. Right? So a lot of mixture there now. And your response in your day-to-day -day life would be partly with this assumption. Partly with all these assumptions you have accumulated over the years, you know. And therefore, when somebody is looking at you from outside, you will see a lot of contradiction in your conduct, in your behavior, in your work. Right? That is the problem. But then what do you do? Don't try to take care of the other to begin with. Take care of yourself. <laughs> work with yourself. And if you do that, right, then it will be possible for you to work with the other. As I gave us many things yesterday, and we have many examples like that. They, as you go on understanding things, you know, as your you know, desire, thought and selection become in line with your natural acceptance, you find that you become comfortable within. And when you are comfortable within, you are able to behave properly with other human beings, whether it is children or the grown-ups. It is that change in your behavior which makes all the difference. Right? So, certainly if you take time, so don't think that, you know, as I mentioned yesterday also, that this is no marriage to marriage. This is not something like some, you know, magic. It is something which I have to understand myself. Right? Something which I have to live in accordance with this. So I have to work with myself first. Then it is something, when I am able to live according to this, I would share with others. When I do that, then it becomes a part of the education. Right? So I can bring it to the education, you know, process of education. And so on, you know. So it is a time taking process. But then it is good to start it. Because what we are doing otherwise is very damaging for the society and for individuals. What we are doing otherwise is very damaging for the society and for the individual. So it is good to start, you know, with this clarity that it will take a lot of time with our own self. It will take time in our relationship with other human beings. And it will take time to bring it in the form of a human order. So that clarity is required, that it is going to take time. But <coughs> clarity is... <coughs> But this clarity is also required that is essential for all of us. And because it is essential, therefore, we must start this process with our own self, with our relation, with our students. And finally with the whole society. Because what we are doing otherwise is more damaging. What we are doing otherwise is more damaging. Yesterday somebody was saying that we teach economics, right? And in economics we are saying that the needs are unlimited and resources are limited. Right? If you are teaching this to the student, Right? If I have to draw a conclusion of the, out of this, right, I would say that if needs are unlimited <coughs> and resources are limited, then everybody is bound to be deprived. So what you are doing? You are giving the guarantee of deprivation. <laughs> what do you think, Mahapatraji? <laughs> what is your area of specialization? 
and tourism. Tourism, yeah. What do you think? If you are teaching this in the name of economics, the needs are unlimited, resources are limited. The conclusion of it would be that everybody is bound to be deprived. Is that conclusion right or not? Practically, what is happening? You are making this, these students to have a feeling of prosperity or have a feeling of deprivation. sense of prosperity, feeling of prosperity or a feeling of deprivation out of this assumption. <coughs> the students who go through this economics, study of this economics, do they have the feeling of prosperity or the feeling of deprivation? Deprivation. What is it? Mahapatraji asked. And? Yeah. Deprivation. So, is it good to teach this economics or not? <laughs> okay, I will not insist on the answer. I will leave it for you. <laughs> so, as, you know, regard to the implementation, yes. <coughs> is time-taking. It's going to be time-taking because you have to start working with yourself. And that is the last person you want to work with. You think you are okay. Right? You try correcting everybody else. And without correcting yourself. So you find fault with everyone. Right? And you are not looking into yourself. So you have to start with yourself. Then you have to start with your relationship. Then you have to start with the education. And finally with the whole society. And I am saying it is good to start because otherwise what we are doing is more damaging. If my student goes through this economics, he is bound to have this feeling of deprivation. So I am anyway making them deprived. So it is better to introduce this in our education, it is better, you know, certainly better to start working with yourself, with your relationship, right? And with the clarity that finally I have to make myself, you know, right. By way of understanding, by way of feeling, by way of ensuring physical facilities. Right. So this is about the practicality part of it. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, Adam Smith was the one who was uh, actually uh, qualifying all these uh, wants uh, unlimited uh, and resources are limited. And now I, I, I've been invited in one of the high schools to deliver a lecture on economics. And uh, definitely now I realize that I have to say that wants are limited and resources are unlimited. And the problem is that we have a common exam for the students who will be evaluated by others. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, I had responded to this yesterday. I will repeat my answer. <coughs> this question came yesterday also. Yesterday in the afternoon, I mean in the evening discussion, <coughs> So what do we do? Right? What do we tell the you know, students? I said, give them both the option. Tell them that this is what Adam Smith says. Right? And this is supposed to be the part of your textbook. Right? 
and this is what is the alternative proposal. You verify both of them. <laughs> and then, when it comes to writing in the examination, you must write both. <laughs> let, let the teacher see that you have the information of what Adam Smith has.